All right, so our last lecture ended when I'm about to code up something to demonstrate how good finite difference actually is, right? So let's uh, uh, start today's lecture by actually coding that up. So let's go to our most uh, recent lecture. Now it's lecture 11, and uh, we are one week away from midterm. So next uh, <laughs> Wednesday, we will have a uh, 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 closed book uh, in classroom exam uh, before spring break. All right, so let's code up a, a simple finite difference scheme to solve first uh, the parabolic equation that has waves going towards the left or goes going towards the right, and then let's code up a finite difference for solving the heat equation for computing. Uh, like the the parabolic equation right and the, let's evaluate how accurate is the finite difference schemes so again we'll create a, a function du dt with first the hyperbolic okay and uh, that's actually something uh, we already know how to do the first argument is time if we want to use the MATLAB's OD solvers and it returns the derivative with respect to t, right? Okay, so let's set our big U to be something constant. For example, let's do some high-speed stuff, 10. Okay, and uh, uh, our computation of du dx, again, uh, if we assume a periodic boundary condition, right, would be, uh, would be consisting of the first, uh, um, the first grid point. Well, we first need the dx. Dx, let's say, is one over n, where n is the number of grid points, which is also the number of intervals if we have a periodic boundary condition. So, n is going to be the length of our input u. So, the first, uh, uh, the first uh, du dt is going to be u at the right hand side, which is u two, right? minus u at the left hand side which is actually beyond the domain but because we have a periodic boundary condition the one immediately to the left of the first grid point is actually u end right okay so that um, we are going to divide the entire array by 2dx so u of 3 to n minus u of 1 to n minus 2 do you all know that notation of if you say n minus 2 it'll be the second to last. It's actually yes. the third to last, right? N minus N is the very last. N minus one is second to last. Yeah. Uh, N minus two is the third. Okay. So we have the very last one which is which is gonna be U one minus U of N minus one. Right. Okay, any questions about this? I need a dot divide. Pardon? Yeah, the very last one, if you look at the right neighbor of the very last entry, you wrap back to the very first entry. Okay? So my du dt is going to be minus big U times du dx. Here I don't actually need a dot product because if you think of uh, this product as a matrix product or, or element wise product, it's the same thing because big U is a constant. Okay, so here, uh, different from last time, let's actually evaluate how accurate the scheme is. Yes? Uh, shouldn't it be u n minus 1 minus u 1? You mean here? Yeah. Uh, Okay. Oh, okay, okay, I'm always doing okay. u i plus 1 minus okay. u i minus 1. Here, i is the very last entry. u plus 1, if you um, wrap it back, would be just the 1, right? Okay. So, let's code up uh, another function to evaluate the accuracy. And to evaluate the global accuracy, we are not actually looking at uh, it's a script. We are not looking at uh, so we're not looking at the how accurate we're approximating the differential operators. We're looking at how accurate the solution is, 
right? So in order to do that, we'll be calling OD45 with this DDT hyperbolic multiple times. Okay, so each time we're going to be computing uh, T of U is equal to ODE, let's use OD45, the function and uh, interval, let's actually run it for a unit time over which the any function should travel for how many lengths? Ten. Ten, right? So our domain, remember, is periodic with the interval of one, right? Because the x is one over n. So if the signal has traveled for ten lengths, what would be the real analytical solution be? Does it actually depends on the initial condition? So if I have a periodic initial condition, no matter what it is, if it has traveled by one period, what would it be like? Same. Huh? Like its initial. You actually recover to its initial position, right? So if I have a signal u0, whatever it is, as long as it's periodic in 0, 1, the signal is actually repeated for infinitely many times, right? So if I have the signal travel by a length of 1, that means this point has going to this point, this point has going to this point, this point has going to this point, the signal is going to be what? Exactly the same, right? How about traveling for 10 lengths? exactly the same right so I actually know what is the analytical solution I should get it's actually the initial condition that makes it uh, very convenient to check the accuracy of numerical schemes for hyperbolic equations so let's uh, implement that with uh, whatever u0 it is right so let's for example if x is uh, let's set and outside, let's say n is 100, x would be 1 to 100 divided by, well, 1 to n divided by n, right? Okay, so let's give it an easy initial condition, u0 equal to cosine of x, which we know is not periodic, so times 2 pi, which is periodic. Okay, and then the error is going to be u and column, which is the final solution, minus u0, right? And then we can look at how much error we have. So if we run this, we get error. Uh, da, da, da. So, so am I flipping the two arguments or? Dimension of matrices. Okay, I think I might need to have this transposed. Now, did it wrong? It didn't wrong either. Uh, dimension of matrices. Oh, okay. So that means here uh, I sh need to put semicolon. <clears throat> now, does it wrong? Okay, looks like we have wrong. So we get in workspace an error that is actually the wrong shape. Uh, why is that the case? Because my u0 is 100 by 1, my u is this by 100. So when I evaluate my error, I need to transpose it. Okay, so let me run this again. And uh, here I get an error that is 100 by 1. That's good. So let's plot x error we get something that is not zero but uh, pretty small okay so that means we solved the equation to an accuracy of something like five percent the initial condition goes from minus one to one right now let's vary n and uh, see how does the error go down as i increase n 